On today's episode, Missy and I are talking about expanding your awareness. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. The show is about to begin. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of On Finding Peace, and this is the podcast where Missy and I talk about basic tips and things that you can do on a daily basis to help you find your inner peace and to uh, help enhance happiness in life. And uh, today we're going to be talking about expanding your awareness. So how's it going, Missy? Pretty good. Pretty good. How are you? I'm doing well. Still, uh, still working from home. Still, um, you know, under restrictions in society. But I guess that's how it's going to be for a little bit. Yeah, I know. I keep getting a, a sweat mustache every time I wear my mask out. I'm like, I have to pull it down just to wipe the sweat mustache off. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's definitely can't imagine what it'd be, be like having a full face beard like you guys do all the time. <laughs> It's, you know, people used to ask me before, you know, doesn't that beard make you hot in the summer? And I always say, no, 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 it's fine. Because it was. Yeah. But you're right. You, you put a mask, mask on. on. <laughs> now you're now like, oh, it is the God. worst thing in the world. <laughs> Can't imagine how much heat is created in that little space. <laughs> uh, not good with all that hair, but I'm not shaving just because of a mask. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, nope, I don't play me at all. <laughs> Yeah, but so, things, are, things are good here. I mean, uh, you know, we're, we're now life on the farm and uh, it's, it's, it's magical. I mean, like, you know, you would think that it's tough because there's animals and, and you know, lots of work to do, but it's, it's being in nature every day and making sure that, you know, like you're in tune and you're grounded and it just, uh, you really feel the energy flowing through you in in just different ways. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. So what kind of animals do you got? Um, we have bunnies and we have ducks and we have our dogs right now. So we'll probably expand on that a little bit, but at this point, that's what I can handle. <laughs> so <laughs> I have to chase the ducks out, flapping my arms, getting them to go back home in the mornings. And, uh, the bunnies are pretty easy. Um, and then of course the dogs are just dirty and messy every time they come in <laughs> so <laughs> so it's definitely uh it's definitely been a challenge of how to keep the floors clean but um other than that yeah it's yes. you know if that's the trouble that we have then you know i'll take it so for our viewers who watch the video then maybe we can do a remote from the farm <laughs> yeah. i almost sat outside in the midst today of the ducks. yeah <laughs> No, it is not cute. Especially I'm trying to be all dressed up this morning and I have to go put the ducks away and I'm in my rubber rain boots. And I'm like, if anybody saw this, they would just crack up laughing because I'm laughing at myself right now. But, um, you know, this is this is the way we roll. It's, I had to change out the heels for some rubber boots for a while today. <laughs> well, you know, I, I think that that's a perfect unscripted ad for people to join our Patreon because those would be great pictures to share <laughs> with a certain membership level on Patreon <laughs> that if you yes. pay money, you will get to see Missy. All right. Only if they pay money. If they pay money, I will take pictures in my rain boots, in the mud. <laughs> chasing. Well, yeah, boots. they'd have to subscribe at a certain level to be able to get that kind of, you know. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you're really going to have to because it's, it's bad enough that the kids see me and, and my boyfriend sees me. And yeah, I'm so glad to be yeah, succeeded. So <laughs> if, if, if you all want to see what it looks like working on the farm dressed up, <laughs> Subscribe to Patreon, support this podcast. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's great. Uh, yes, yes. So, awesome stuff. Yeah. But, uh, so what, what are we uh, talking about on this episode, about our expectations and all? I think that um, 
that, you know, just being able to tune into the awareness uh, of what life's trying to teach you will help us be able to clean the space and heal the space to elevate ourselves to, to a new level. And um, I guess I never realized how important it was. And I never realized once I found out how important it was, how much other people, you know, um, some people just don't pay attention to it. And that's okay, because that's where they are on their paths. And at the same time, like I wanted to share it with everybody when I started realizing, you know, who we really are, um, what life teaches us, how we can create in this space that we live in on this planet. And, um, you know, I just, but I want to share because I'm like, oh, I want that for everybody. I want that for you. I want that for you, you know, and um, sometimes, you know, we forget we, we, we we're here in this world and we forget we're in it, but not of it, you know? Yeah. And that's not my line. That that's actually one of my teachers um, says that a lot. And, and it really does. It makes a huge difference. It kind of uh, gives you like a, a zoomed back perspective constantly to be in an observance of what's going on in your life and to be able to feel and see like how the laws of the universe play into it so that we can clean it up and, and help affect everybody as a whole. Yeah. So a lot of that mindfulness piece in there of, of living in the moment and just really observing and taking in what's happening around me right here at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, I started, uh, and, and I, I meditate regularly. I have meditated regularly for a long time. And, you know, I've fallen off the wagon, and then I get back on because I really enjoy it. And then I'm like, but it's not a meditation like most people would think. Like, I don't sit and ohm, and I don't even sit up. Sometimes I just lay there, and I'm just quiet so that I can hear. But recently, um, uh, one of the teachers that I work with uh, shared with me a heart meditation. And basically how to activate and come into your heart so that you aren't always in your head. When you're in your head, things have a different uh, perception. You're, you have a different perception. And when you're in your heart, it's even, it's just amazing the perception that you feel. Um, and it's weird because in the expansion, it's like I can actually feel the energy in my body. And I know that's pretty crazy, but I'm sure anybody who you talk to about like, how's your, have your legs ever fallen asleep, you know, or, you know, that's, that's the feeling that you get. But instead of it being like, oh, I was sitting this way and I, I, I had this feeling in my foot because my foot fell asleep. It's like that all the time. And mm -hmm. it's peaceful. It's like rhythmical and, and it's comforting. And it just makes you feel like there's so much more uh, trust and safety in knowing that the plan has been laid for you and you don't have to do anything. Like you're not, you don't have to control everything. You don't have to muscle your way through it as a human. Um, I feel like I'm talking a lot right now. <laughs> oh, that good stuff. That's why I haven't interrupted. I, I'm, I'm enjoying this. <laughs> but, but yeah, so, I mean, and, and that's just like, I feel like I'm floating through life, honestly. And, um, it's not that I don't ever come down. It's not that I don't ever have low vibrational moments because that's the human part. Yeah, but at that's the same late. time, you all have that. Yeah, it, but it really makes you appreciate the high points when you have those. And you can also get there, feel the dip now. And then it's like, wait, what? Wait, why did I think that? Or where, where did that? I'm not entertaining that. Like, just get out of here and you kind of go right back to, you know, that high vibration, you know, and that takes practice. Like there's the muscles that we talk about all the time, you know, being able to stand in the observation and see what it's trying to teach you and see where you need to clean it up. Mm -hmm. And, and um, we have a lot, I have a lot of people that are in my space who uh, let's say, I'm just going to say politics. We all know how politics kind of go and I don't want to talk politics. No, but, no, we're not going to no, do that. But <laughs> There's a lot of uh, push and pull is what I'm trying to, and, yep. and so there's a lot of um, resistance to the other side, 
right? But the pushing doesn't get you anywhere and the pulling doesn't get you anywhere. What we really need to do instead of pointing fingers is notice that three are pointing back at you, right? Exactly. And so whatever you're expelling that you don't like about somebody is really the world mirroring and reflecting to you that you have it in your space somewhere that you need to clean it up. And sometimes it's hard to look. It's hard to say, where am I doing that? Like, um, what is this for? Wh you know, how can I heal this? And mm. those questions, being in those questions, the answer becomes evident. Not always right away, but eventually. Right. Well, and I think those are the, the very important questions. And that's what I talk about when I push mindfulness is if we're going to sit in the moment and we're going to feel what we feel and experience what we experience, we can start asking the questions and the non-judgmental questions. So it's, you know, not, well, I'm feeling this way and I shouldn't be that that's judging it. Right. But I, I like the way you're putting it, that it, it's more of a, why am I feeling this way? Yeah. Or why am I reacting this way? Why am I responding this way? Because now I'm not judging what I'm doing. I'm just trying to learn, yeah. you know? So, right. If, if I'm pushing or pulling, you know, with, with somebody else, why am I doing that? You know, what part of this is healthy? What part of this is not healthy? Yeah. Um, and, and I think that to add to that, it's also about unconditional love, not only mm -hmm. for yourself, but for others. Right. And, uh, and that's something that I have been practicing because I don't always love everybody. I don't always like everybody. <laughs> it's just, it's, however, that being said is, um, I shared this with somebody and, and, uh, my, one of my teachers again, and she pointed out something so profound to me. It was unconditional love is not just loving without conditions, right? It's loving where they are on their path and not trying to alter it. Exactly. And I was like, Oh, that's so huge. Cause um, previously in my life, I've totally been a type A personality. Like I had to, everything had to go my way. Right. And um, now it's like, it's different. Like the dogs might bark or run through the background or, you know, like 10 minutes before we got on the podcast, Chris and I were talking and my dog's chewing on the door and I'm like, um, gotta go real quick, you know, but that's, that's the flow. Like that's being in the flow of yep. life and being like, okay, look, I get to create around this. So I can either lose my cool, get upset, let it bother me, or I can just handle it and then move forward. Right. And, um, and then it's funny later. Right. You know, and a lot of people wouldn't think that their dog chewing on their door is funny. But to me, that's that's her way of trying to say, like, hey, I, I need I need you like I'm she's actually I think uh, has anxiety when she can't mm -hmm. see me. She has anxiety. So so that's her way of letting me know, like, hey, I, I need to be I'm nervous, like I need you. And um, so thankfully, we have two dogs. So so the other one kind of <laughs> becomes the emotional support pet. <laughs> And, and maybe one day we'll explore the um, emotional insecurities of ducks. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Not going to happen, my friend. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, well, when you're saying about that unconditional love, I, I, I think that that's one of the important pieces that we tend to miss within ourselves. You know, that a lot of people will talk about unconditional love, but how often do we talk about that for ourselves? Oh, you know, uh, how many times can we say I, I unconditionally love me? Yeah. Meaning what you had just said, you know, meaning can I love me for who I am at this moment? Yeah. And that's not to say that I'm perfect. Right. But who I am right now with the good, the bad, the otherwise, can I love me perfect. at this moment? Yeah, but it is perfect. Like, you, you know, you say we think it's not perfect, but it is perfect, you know, and uh, like we can't, we can't lay it out any better. We can't have forethought, you know, um, into the future, what we should be by now. Right. And then we yep. should on ourselves, we compare ourselves to other people, you know, um, and I'm just as guilty. I will tell you that, that when I started 
getting into transformation, one of my first coaches shared with me to um, be my own best friend. Because mm. like I would, I would give money, I would give love, I would, I would uplift and, and uh, thrust people forward to, to make sure that they were at a higher vibration. I would help transmute that negative energy that they were going through, which I didn't realize that's called alchemy, right? So I would transmute that energy. But then when I was down, I would never reach out because I, first of all, thought vulnerability was bad. But second, I didn't do it for myself. Like I would keep myself in the ring, you know, like I was fighting against myself mentally to stay down, just stay down, just don't get up. You know, you've been knocked out. It's okay. And then I realized like, wait a minute, if I would do this for everybody else, why am I not doing it for myself? Mm -hmm. And um, exactly. that was a definitely a journey through self-love for me. And um, now I recognize like, like as an empath, I need other, other empaths. I need other people to, you know, just help filter out the crap, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's another thing about nature that does that for me or taking a salt bath or, you know, things that just make me feel good going and swimming in the ocean, you yep. know? And I think that the more we tune into those things, the more we heal, the less things bother us in life. Well, because we're more accepting. Yeah. You know, if, if, if I can look at myself and, and offer that unconditional love to who I am at this moment without all of those shoulds, yeah, <laughs> that's going to reduce my anxieties, yeah. you know, and then that's going to allow for certain things to just kind of move through me in, in life without yes. me getting all upset about it. Yeah. Because I can accept, well, that's how it is right now. Um, I, I think a part of it, too, is there's always growth moments. Yeah. You know, so it, it's not like, well, this is who I am, take it or leave it. Yeah. You know, because there's always areas that we can grow and, and become better people. But um, I think that's what really reduces, you know, the stress. You know, I, I had a client, um, I don't know, maybe a year ago or so. Uh, she came to me, she had just turned 30 years old and she said she was filled with anxiety. And when we kind of talked about what's going on in her life, what was the anxiety, the, the big source of her anxiety was that thought she kept telling herself that she should have been married with a child by the time she was 30. Oh boy. And here she was 30 and didn't even have a boyfriend. Yeah. Well, and that, that was anxiety because of all the shoulds she'd been yeah. telling herself this for decades yeah. uh, since she was a teen, you know, that by 30, I should be married and I should have at least one child. Um, and here she was 30, a, a successful person, but had never been married, no children and didn't even have a boyfriend at the time that she was seeing me. Well, and here's it. This is where I feel like, like the law of mentalism, you know, if you think about it, you bring it, you, you bring it forth into your life. Right. So her resistance, you know, to thinking that she really wasn't going to have it because you can't should. Right. Yeah. And it, it, it's, it's a, I am going to do this or, or yeah, I should do this, you know, because when we should, we just, we just don't. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so she brought that about, but the resistance was there because of that should. And somebody told me once, and I, I love this because it makes me think constantly when I feel that resistance, I'm really closing my heart. I'm really shutting down and, and protecting myself, which is an egoic standpoint, right? It's the, it's the keep me looking good, keep me safe, keep me comfortable and make me right. So the ego really just made her right that she wasn't going to have it, you know, because yeah. she wasn't in her, I'm assuming in her mind, she wasn't enough. Yep. You know, and, and that comes into, you know, with this expanding of the awareness, because part of what we had to do is work on that awareness of where are you at the moment? What is all the positives in your life at the moment? Right. And that accepting of the self-love and unconditional love that I am who I am. Yeah. 
you know, and, and life will be life. Um, so, yeah, I think that's how, you know, we, we begin to reduce some of these anxieties and, and hopefully find more of an inner peace. Yeah. Having walked that path, I can tell you that when you're starting out on the path, it's like, you know, it's like you have this really strong muscle, right? And then you got this little wimpy <laughs> muscle, right? So the really strong muscle is like, I'm not good enough. I haven't done it. You know, this is not possible for me. I don't know what they're talking about. And then the, the wimpy muscle is like, oh, you're pretty. Oh, you're, you're good enough. You're smart. You're kind. You're, you know, whatever. It's trying to tell you that you're, you're, you're doing right. And and all the wonderful things that everybody you want everybody to think about you and you want to think about yourself. But until you start to build that muscle, that crap feels foreign because that strong muscle is like, it's, it's overpowering. It's overwhelming. It's like the bully. Right. Yep. And, and so until you start to stand up for yourself, then you're not going to, you're not going to recognize that you are stronger than you thought. And, and then this muscle gets weak and then, you know, the, the muscle that I'm, I'm video, I'm pointing to the muscle I was flexing. But when that mu muscle gets weak, the other one gets stronger because you stopped using it, right? Yep. So um, I think it's important for people to realize that you, it's not, you just need to keep going, even though it feels weird, it feels wrong, it feels like just so foreign to you. It will start to feel natural the more that you practice. Yep. I, I totally agree. You know, it, it's, I don't think it's any different, you know, than any other exercise that you would do where you just have to practice it, you know, and whether it's an intellectual exercise or a physical exercise, you know, but this emotional type of exercise takes practice day in and day out. And it's not going to happen overnight. It's going to take a, a, you know, some time, mm -hmm. but you'll start to see it become easier and easier as time goes on. But I really think that key is, is that acceptance, you know, just to really start with saying, this is the way my reality is. And whether I like it or not, that's a different story. But do I just accept where this is my reality? And then I move from that point of the acceptance, I move into what do I do next? Right. And, and, it's, it's not I mean, like if you have a scale and one side of the scale is all the negative stuff and the other side of the scale is all the wonderful stuff. Just remember, it's just going to be a tick up at a time. It's not yep. going to just completely flip flop. You know, it's going to take time to build that up and, and, and do those things. And I think that's what a lot of us um, through the process, you get impatient. Like you get impatient, and but the more that you practice, you start to re recognize like, oh, I was doing this and that just irritated me. What irritated me about it? And why did it irritate me? And you think about that in the moment rather than, you know, uh, 10 days later, you're still thinking about it, you know? Right. Um, and, and that's where you can get to that will become more peaceful and, and help you to expand the awareness of what's going on in your space and how to heal it. Mm-hmm. Well, and, and because, you know, in, in the way that you're saying it, what this is now doing is giving me the power and control over this, you know, because it's not just, you know, things are affecting me, but I can look at this and, and when I'm asking the question, why am I bothered, yeah. is going to give me an answer, which automatically is something that I can do. Yeah to work on why I'm being bothered. And, and the minute that I can actually do something, that empowerment, that control, that's going to reduce my stress and anxiety as well. You're going from basically uh, victim to accountable, yeah. right? And all it is is willingness. Mm -hmm. Like that's it. It is willingness to have an opportunity to see there's a different possibility. Like, and, you know, and know that you don't know what it's for. Like, because the moment we think we know, guaranteed something else is going to pop up and you're going to go, damn, I thought I was over that. Or, you know, I, th I thought I knew that I was, I was finished with that. Um, it's just, 
it's just continual practice. This is, this is the game of life, yep. you know, and, and the more that we can all get out there and do things like this, the happier that we're all going to be. Totally agree. Yeah. And, and that's really how we, we can find that inner peace and, and hopefully keep it, uh, you know, on a daily basis. Yeah. It'll be, it'll be little dips instead of, you know, highs and lows and highs and lows, like, like the yo-yo effect. I hate the yo-yo effect, but I'm telling <laughs> you, like, you have that little dip when you get to that point, you're like, oh, wait, okay, let me just, it's like, like tune in your, your radio. You're like, oh, they're static, right? That's basically what it feels like. It's like, all of a sudden you have a little dip. You're like, oh, static, wait, let me just retune again. And then, oh, it's clear, perfect. And, and that's what it is. That's, that's how life can be. And that's how your awareness has everything to do with this expansion. Yep, exactly. But that, that's where we need to spend that time mm-hmm. in finding quiet enough to examine what's going on. Yeah. And in general, we don't do that. Yeah. Well, we have so many distractions and, right. and social media, um, friends, family, you know, and I, this is not negative. I don't mean any of those things are negative. It just means you definitely need to have the time for yourself and, um, you know, let your mantra be, let it be easy. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have to be difficult. You don't have to muscle your way through it. If you just relax, you'll start to figure it out. So don't think yep. that there's something that you have to go out and learn and, and it just will come naturally to you. Just remember, you know, that, that, that's what you're here for. Keep it simple. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I didn't sense a natural flow into a listener challenge, but Ooh. but I, I, I wonder is, is kind of the keep it simple. Would, would, would that be a listener challenge to I think so. have people talk about how they can keep some things in their lives simple? Yeah, keep it simple and uh, practice being your own best friend. Ooh. Yeah. I think that, that's, uh, that's, that's how life should be. Mm-hmm. It's working for me anyway. I'm just saying. Well, and, and that's the you know, great thing that I, I love about what I'm doing. And then you can probably share similarly that, you know, w- what I talk about are things that I've tried for my own self and yeah. it, it seemed to have worked. So I share that with others. And if it works for you, great. And if it doesn't, then, you know, f- find whatever path works for you. But, you know, I, I can definitely say this has worked for me. Yeah. And, and, uh, <laughs> I guess I would go one step further in saying that when you're led to do things rather than thinking that you're doing it all on your own. In other Mm. words, like spirit is with me, you know, whether you call it God, spirit, universe, whatever you call it. Right. For me, as I'm being led to do things, I'm finding that it unfolds perfectly. However, when I think I need to do it and I want it a certain way myself, it just doesn't pan out in the time frame that I hope. So um, like this, this house, eight months, it took eight months to buy this house. And <laughs> if I wasn't led that things were always going to work out and it was going to work out perfectly. And I knew deep in my heart that, that I just had to be patient, then I probably would have never made it. I probably wouldn't have any hair on my head, <laughs> but, but because I, that peace was there, you know, it was there. I just knew that it just wasn't the right time. And, and I had to wait for it to all fall into place and the puzzle pieces to fit. And as I did, it was, it was surreal the way that it all unfolded. So be led as well in, in the things that you're doing so that you can, you can share that with others. Mm -hmm. Yep. I, I would totally agree with that. Uh, that might even be a good way to kind of, were you, were you going to say something? I was just going to say the people that are watching us on, 
Chris's door is just miraculously opening and closing. <laughs> and I'm like, I think there's only a dog in the house. With <laughs> so sorry, a little squirrel moment from Missy. <laughs> oh, it, it, it happens. And uh, I guess we could have people comment as to what they think is happening. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I know that the little dog is not capable of doing that. Oh. Uh, I don't think so. Um, no, my uh, family has re-entered the house, and oh, nice. uh, so I closed the door originally, and and now it has uh, been opened and closed. Crept, crept back open. <laughs> so oh, I was home alone. <laughs> yeah. So li li living in the moment. Um, yes. It, it's it's uh, nothing more than. <laughs> uh, yeah, pe people doing that. Yeah. <laughs> Good expansion of your awareness. Though. I, yes, I appreciate thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> uh, so any uh, quick final thoughts? Uh, no, just, uh, you know, be kind to yourself and, uh, and, and just let it all unfold. It'll, it'll just be beautiful. Yep. I, I totally agree. And, and my stress would be the acceptance. And, uh, accept yourself where you are and move where you know it seems the healthiest for you but start with acceptance absolutely well thank you so great much stuff. Chris. all right all right it was great talking again and uh again i encourage everybody to comment below or send us uh emails or on our social media uh our websites are listed and um do the listener challenge. And again, if you want the pictures, go over to Patreon and <laughs> subscribe. And uh, what he really we, meant we, to we say was you. hashtag on finding peace when you do the listener challenge. <laughs> yes, that, that too. Um, and uh, we, we, we will go from there. All right. Thank you guys right. for listening. Thank you.